what y'all don't know, and uh, Art was just asked me, he said, hey, there's a Willie Nelson fan. I said, well, what you don't know is just this last weekend, Saturday night, we took uh, all three of our kids to the Austin Rodeo. So we've been on rodeo circuit. We've done the KD Rodeo. We've done the Houston Rodeo. Now we've done the Austin Rodeo. And about a few weeks ago, my wife, Dara, she had said, you know what? I really would like to go to a Willie Nelson concert. And it's been a few years since we've been to one, so I looked, and Willie was playing at the Austin Rodeo Saturday, and my twins, Julia and Jonah, who were going to be seven a week from Friday, we had them doing mutton busting at the Katy Rodeo. And so I thought, okay, my wife gets to go to the rodeo to see Willie. My twins can do mutton busting again. And uh, my oldest daughter, well, we'll take her on some carnival rides. And uh, we had a great time. My daughter is the reigning mutton busting champion, I'd like everybody to know. So uh, she, she is very, very proud of her belt buckle that she won. And unfortunately for her twin brother, he didn't win. So, uh, so there's a little, rival, a little rivalry going on. But, it, but it's great to see all of you today. And, and I'll just talk a few minutes. And then really, if you have any questions, First, I want to say thank you for all the help, all the support, everything that you do to, to help keep Texas strong and make Texas what it is today. You know, my wife and I, we've been blessed as I've served in the legislature and then moved over, obviously, into the controller's office. And in the last capacity, as I've continued to travel across the state of Texas and people, I still remember a radio interview quite a while back and I got on and a gentleman had asked me a question that I didn't expect. And he said, so you've traveled the state of Texas. What have you found? And, and I really didn't expect that question. I paused for just a second, and I said, you know, regardless of wherever you go, Texas is a really good place to call home. And my wife and I are very blessed to be able to raise our three children here, and I am firmly convinced more and more than ever before, especially after traveling across the whole state and continuing to. I was just in the Metroplex yesterday and flew back late, late last night. But wherever you go, I'd much rather raise my children in Texas than anywhere else. Texas. We are very blessed to be able to call Texas home. I'll tell you a little bit about kind of what I've been working on back through when I was running for office and after office. One of the things that I pledged to do was to make sure that the controller's office is not just a model state agency for Texas, but really a model state agency throughout the entire nation. And part of that had to start, number one, with a top to bottom review of the entire agency. As many of you know, we have over 20 field offices scattered throughout the state of Texas, have four offices in other parts of the nation. We have over 20 divisions in this office. Last night, I was in Dallas. Uh, the last event I was at was an event for uh, Israeli bonds. And one of my counterparts who is in Oklahoma, the Oklahoma treasurer was there. And we were both there for this event. And our office is very different from many of the other states. And in part because they're the treasurer, they're the finance department, where we encompass so many other issues that the legislature has asked us to do. And so I felt like it was important to stop, start with a top to bottom review of all of the different divisions. We have started at the high level, we're working, continuing through that. But part of what I have talked about is that regardless of what the legislature asks us to do, we have a core constitutional mission. And that core constitutional mission is number one, giving a revenue estimate to the legislature as they work through this legislative session. Number two, we're the finance, the treasury department. And then number three, we're the tax collector. The other day I went and got my eyes checked. I needed to get a checkup, it'd been a little over a year. And so, you know, you get those forms and I was sitting there filling out the forms like I always do. They ask you to do a re-up, put down your name and, you know, your kids' names again. And has this changed, that changed? Do you have this? Do you have that? And down at the bottom, it had occupation. And I thought, what do I put? And so I put tax collector. Uh, so I'm waiting for my optometrist who has my personal number to call me and go, uh, you're the tax collector now, which he knows who I am. But I had made that comment later to a county actually in Fort Bend County, Mike. I was in Fort Bend County for a speech that afternoon. And I told everybody in the room and somebody had stood up and they'd said, Glenn, now that you're the tax collector, and I went, oh, it sounds way worse when you say it than when I say it. But, but I say that kind of jokingly, but then also the point of the seriousness is that we interface with every single person in the state of Texas. 
26 and a half million people, and we interface with every individual person. Why? Because everybody, unfortunately, whether you like it or not, we all pay taxes. And we have to make sure that in my office, we have the highest level of customer service. And earlier today, I was meeting with a group of employees at the controller's office, which is in part of a leadership team going on right now. And they're working on a project. And several of them had mentioned, so Glenn, I know that you have talked about customer service, customer service. And that's really part of that top to bottom review. When we talk about those three core constitutional functions, we have to provide that level of service higher than anybody else. The IRS, as you've probably heard, they're looking at cutting back on service. And I think we have to improve service. We have to make sure that in the 21st century, you and I as taxpayers, my predecessor Susan Combs did a great job with transparency. Texas has become one of the model states in making sure that you can see how your tax dollars are being spent. What are they going to? But the fact is, is when that went live back in 2009, six years later, a lot has actually changed in technology. Everybody in this room, I see some have it out on their, on their, in their laptop right now, either your laptop, your iPads, your phones. You can look all kinds of stuff up here. I was given a speech the other day, and the gentleman before me had made the point that one of the major chains pizza companies, and he mentioned their name. I didn't mention their name. I'm not a, it's not like I'm a NASCAR driver and I'm a sponsor with, with, with tags up here on me. But one of, the, one of the brands that he had mentioned, that 60% of the pizzas that are ordered are ordered through an app. And so my point being is we have to make sure that customer service in the 21st century is easy for you to find, is at your fingertips, and it's not just a mass amount of information, but it's something that you can get and you can readily understand it. Government can't behind, hide behind the fact that it says, we're transparent, here's a whole bunch of stuff, and it's like walking into a library and trying to figure out which page is that one page that you need out of all the books that are book, on the bookshelf. And so we're trying to move transparency literally into the 21st century in 2015. As we've done the top to bottom review, one of the things that I have identified is nine state taxes that are outdated. They no longer need to exist. They're archaic. And the fact is, is by eliminating them, not only does it get rid of nine taxes off the books, but it helps my office focus on that core customer service mention that I've mentioned. We've had those bills filed in the House and the Senate. I'm working on making sure both sides of the rotunda work together, and they've all agreed to work on those bills. I think several of them, at least on one side of the, the rotunda, is being voted out later this week. So I'm, I'm happy to make sure that we're trying to streamline the state agency, focus on our core missions. And, and one other thing that I wanted to ask about, mention, and then I'll open it up to questions, is this office touches, as I mentioned, everybody's lives. That the first job that I had to do was give the revenue estimate. Now, let me ask this question. I've asked a few people this in some speeches. Is there anybody in this room that can guarantee me with 100% accuracy that you can tell me what is your personal household? And I don't want to know the numbers, none of my business. But do you know how much money is going to come into your personal household starting in September of this year? And let's say ending two years later. Can anybody give me that forecast and that number? Nobody? Well, I have to do that times 26 and a half million people because we touch every single sector of the state economy. So looking at the revenue estimate for the state of Texas, we look at the breadth of the entire state. A lot of people at the end of last year, especially folks, commentators for newspapers, supposedly on the far east and the far west coast and a few other places, wanted to say the Texas miracle is over. 1.2 million jobs, sure, Texas entrepreneurs have created 1.2 million jobs since the end of the last recession. The other 49 states put together are still negative. Sure, the fact is in the last year, the January of last year to January of this year, that men and women in Texas had created over 400,000 jobs in Texas. I mean, just since I got sworn into office in January, there's been 19,000 known job announcements in Texas. So a lot of people wanted to say Texas is going back to the 1980s. It's going back into a recession because Texas is no more than an oil state. Oil is important to this state, but it's much more diverse than it used to be. And so Texas is a prosperous state. It's a great place to call home. But in part, it's a great place to call home because of the men and women that live here. 
And so we are focused on trying to achieve that highest ultimate customer service because the fact is, who do we work for? Taxpayers. That's who we work for, and that's who we interface with, and that's what people deserve. So with that, I'll stop. Questions, comments, who's got any kind of questions? I know Gail. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah, it, it's interesting that last week I made the announcement that February sales tax collection numbers, and you say, why is, why is sales tax important? Because that's the main source of income to your state government. Sales tax is the largest income driving to the state government. And so that's a big indicator of the health of the economy. Obviously, margins tax is a portion. Oil and gas severance taxes is a portion. A few other variety of taxes, motor vehicle fuels tax is a portion, but sales is the biggest portion. Last week I had announced that February numbers, which were really January collections, were 11.7% increase than the January before. That also was the 59th month in a row that those collections have increased. Let me repeat, 59 months in a row. There's no other state that can compare to that. And so oil is important. It's very important, actually. Actually, in our biennial revenue estimate, because oil prices have decreased from close to, to $100 and less to $50 and 40-some-odd 40 40 dollars, depending on the day, that it's quite a bit of dollars that have been cut out of the revenue estimate. I also mentioned when I gave my inauguration speech that for prices going from closer to 100 to closer to 50 for the average person in Texas, that's an $800 increase to their annual bottom line. I mentioned there was a 2% increase to their paycheck. Actually, it's 2.6% in Texas. And, and part of what you're seeing is people, some are saving some of those dollars, some of them are spending them in other places. And so from an economic perspective, a significant decrease in oil is an immediate impact to the state treasury but it also has a lagging impact with consumers and durable items that they're going to purchase, and there's increases in other places. And it gives businesses, different businesses are going to benefit where others have a detriment. But overall, there, there's a real, I would say there's a real sweet spot, at least if you could have somewhere between $60 and $70 oil, that, that's good and healthy for Texas, and it's good and healthy for consumers overall. Other questions, comments? Chairman Hunter. The man in black. <laughs> you always do. All right. Well, it's uh, very good to see you. May God bless you and God bless the great state of Texas. And thank you all very much.